Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to go over the new Z-Depth effect inside Vegas Pro 21. So let's go ahead and load up Vegas Pro 21. I already have a clip on my timeline, and I chose this clip because the subject is very sharp and the background is extremely blurry. There's a lot of separation in this clip, and that's what I found out works best with this type of plugin. Once you've decided on your clip, drag it on your timeline, go to the Effects tab, find Z-Depth, and drag that onto your clip. I'm choosing the default preset, but you can choose absolute values or normalized values. Each of those makes a little bit of difference, and you'll find out depending on what type of media you have, which one works best for you. So once Z-Depth is loaded up, we see our options right here. We have mode with drop downs, and in this drop down menu, you'll choose between absolute values or normalized values. Under that, we have the transparency checkbox, and if you check this box, basically anything that is white on your mat that this effect detects and creates will be your foreground, and anything black will be masked out. And then we have the mask effects checkbox underneath that. If you check that box, then this matte look goes away and you'll be able to see what your final result will look like, but all your masking properties will still be retained. Keeping this box unchecked gives you a good idea of what your mask looks like. But if you want to check the mask effects box and look at what your normal video looks like and play around the sliders that way, you totally can. So with transparency and mask effects checked, I'm going to add some text underneath this video to show you what exactly it does. We can see that the text is now in front of the black areas of our mat and behind the white areas. So it's overlaying on the branch and the bird because that's what this effect automatically detected. And then when we play around with the sliders down here, we're going to start with furthest. You can see what they do. It basically changes the parameters of what the Z-Depth effect thinks is the closest in your frame and what it thinks is the furthest in your frame with the furthest slider underneath it. Sometimes you could play around with those to get the best results, and you may have to do that manually because, you know, automatic programs aren't perfect. We're going to skip a couple of these sliders and go to invert because the invert checkbox allows exactly what it says. It completely invert the plugin. It changes the black parts of the mat to white and the white parts of the mat to black. So by checking the invert box, the sharp subject is now in front of the blurry background. So when we add text, the text shows up on top of the background but behind the subject. Now, if you wanted to keep transparency on in the mask effects checkbox checked as well and see what this mat kind of looks like it's doing to kind of refine the edges, I found that dragging and dropping a white solid background underneath your video gives you a good idea of how the edges are looking on this mask. And now we can start playing with the depth in and depth out sliders. They do exactly what their names entail. You're specifying the depth in of how much masking this plugin is going to do and the depth out of it as well. Utilizing these sliders can provide you some really good fade in effects when it comes to these maskings. If you don't want it to be precise like sharp masks, you can make it kind of like a faded gradient mask as well using these sliders. But I'm going to go ahead and try to make this as sharp as possible. Now underneath invert we have a checkbox that says nearest object only. Now if you check this box, the effect is going to try its best to automatically detect the nearest object and it does a pretty good job about it. But I found that when you play with the sliders yourself, you get some better results. Underneath that, we have the feather slider, which basically feathers out the edges of the mask itself, makes them blurrier, blends them in. You can play with this to get yourself a nice feathered edge, or if you wanted to utilize the auto feather option underneath that, you can do that as well. Auto feather, you know, works pretty well, but I'm personally not a fan of things automatically happening for me when I like to refine them myself, but it could work out better for you depending on what type of media you're trying to use this Z-Depth tool in. Now finally, our last option is the visualization. This changes it from the default black and white matte look to a colorful threshold look that tells you what part of your video is going to be in front of the other part of your video. A cool thing about changing the visualization mode to threshold allows you to get a really good starting point if you haven't already started messing with your video itself. You can click and drag on the screen to automatically detect and select a subject. This uses the AI built into the tool itself. And once you do that, it'll automatically create some parameters for you. And then you can start making adjustments from there. And then the last visualization option we have is depth, which is very similar to your just black and white mask. It's going to tell you what the depth looks like. With the invert box checked, it shows that the white part right here is going to be what's in front and the black part in the back is going to be in the background. I don't necessarily find this mode the most useful for me because when you change sliders around, you're not seeing really any difference happening. So I personally like to keep my visualization at none, refine it with a white background right here to sharpen up the edges however I feel, refine the edges of my detected subject, whether that be to sharpen them up or feather them, and then play the video, see if there are any faults that you need to change, and then make adjustments as needed. 
You can split the clip up multiple times to change a little bit of the parameters if some parameters are working better for a specific clip and you need to change them but not affect the beginning part that looks good. You can split it, then go into the next clip's Z-Depth properties and change it that way and go from there. And then once you're happy with your clip, you can render out and see the kind of results you can get. Now remember, it also is in its infancy stage. This is the first time Vegas is implementing this plugin, so it is only going to get better. But I think this is already an awesome starting point for automatic masking and depth detection. But that does wrap it up for the overview of the Z-Depth plugin. And that wraps it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there, because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next one.